I have so much gloss on right now that it feels kind of problematic. Real quick housekeeping before we get into the video, real quick. Thank you guys for bearing with me as I figure the camera out. I've mentioned it before, my camera that I'm currently using and my microphone were gifted to me from Tina the Fancy Face. She passed along her older camera to me. And then Jen Loves Reviews Jen bought me this microphone to use for the podcast and then I kind of repurposed it for this instead because we're upgrading the podcast a little bit differently now. Just thank you guys for bearing with me. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to set up production. I don't know how to use a very fancy expensive camera like this. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos. I've been doing a lot of trial and error. I know my last kind of wave of videos has looked a little awful or sounded a little awful. I'm trying to tweak something different every single time I film. I'm trying to just like fix one thing that's wrong each time. And I kind of like where I am right now, but I know I could still improve. So just wanted to say that, that I know it's looked a little rough, but I'm trying my best. I'm educating myself. I'm an amateur. I can only go up from here, you know? My name is Lacey of Spooky Lips and Fat Hips, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I haven't done the wavy hands in so long. I used to do like a wavy thing and font would appear. And then anytime anyone talks about me, they go of Spooky Lips and Fat Hips, but I don't do that anymore. So I thought I would throw in a wavy hand gesture for good measure. So this video was a shower thought. I actually wanted to film something completely different today. I wanted to film like a highlighter review. I still might, so if you see me in the same makeup and the same outfit, I ended up filming both videos. Every once in a while, I like to chime in on this channel and talk about something that's culturally relevant to the beauty community at this time because I do view the beauty community as like a living culture and I think that has a lot to do with my educational background. I've studied both sociology and anthropology, so I'm always kind of thinking in that mindset. I took a lot of notes, so I might be looking down throughout this, bear with me. So something I was thinking about was this whole topic of sustainability because I feel like every single YouTube video that I watch now, it comes up in some way, shape, or form. There have been lots of buzzwords in the beauty community, lots of things that are just guaranteed to get clicks, that people are asking creators to talk about, that people are pressuring brands to act on, and currently it's sustainability. Let's Google a quick definition of sustainability, shall we? So according to Google, sustainability traditionally means the ability to be maintained at a certain rate or level, but in this kind of context, it means avoidance of the depletion of natural resources in order to maintain an ecological balance. So when we say sustainability in the beauty community, we're talking about not using natural resources, recycling, not contributing to global admissions, not contributing to landfills, not putting toxic things in our body and in the ecosystem. And there's been a real pressure for influencers and brands to kind of act like this because figuratively and literally the world's kind of on fire right now. You know, we all go on our Facebook timelines, we see the pictures of like turtles choking on straws and we all panic. And we hear this topic so much because it is unfortunately a political issue and that's so, so sad and tragic to me because I don't think the health of all humans, all living things, the globe, I don't think that should be a political issue. I think that should be a living thing on this planet issue. So like right away I'm already like, how do I go into this video without people freaking out? So anyway, but I think people feel so helpless because you see the freaky pictures of the turtles on your timeline. You see the ice caps are melting, you see all of these headlines about global warming, climate change, it's leading to this, it's leading to that, it's contributing to whatever. We all feel very helpless in this whole situation globally. I think politically, I can only speak for the US right now, a lot of us feel very helpless. So this kind of micro-focusing on sustainability in areas that we really spend a lot of time and effort in, like the beauty community for myself, let's say, it makes us feel like we have some kind of control on the situation. And there's been specific issues that have been popping up that I think come up time and time again in these conversations. So I see issues of packaging, what brands are putting their product in, PR packages, packaging when it comes to shipping things out, that's a big issue right now. Ingredients, whether or not our ingredients are safe, whether or not they're being mined safely or produced safely with labor that is ethical. This idea of low buys or no buys, using what we have, 
not over consuming to not contribute to what is going to sit in the landfill not being wasteful that's something that we've seen a lot especially within smaller youtube i would say smaller beauty community channels glitter is something that i'm seeing recently a focus on glitter you know lauren may beauty recently did a fantastic video on glitter i'll link it down below it is kind of hard to watch and you're not going to look at glitter the same way afterwards, but it's important to talk about. All of that stuff. All of the above that I just mentioned, I've seen come into conversation more and more. It's a part of reviews more often. Influencers are giving those critiques towards brands on what they think they should be doing differently. Samantha Ravindahl in the last like year or so is super famous right now for not accepting PR anymore to kind of do her part to fight against all of this. I personally critiqued ColourPop in my last anti-haul because I think the rate at which they produce isn't sustainable and it's scary as hell. And there's also been things like influencers popping off on their fans on Twitter because everybody should be doing their part to fight this losing battle. Hannah Smokey Glow Hannah did a video about when Thomas Halper kind of made some comments on it and she gave a really good perspective on it because that kind of gets into the bigger issue. So the reason why I really wanted to make this video is not so much to preach like what sustainability is and like what we could do about it, but that is a factor. I'm going to talk about that in a second. More so, I'm raising concerns because when I talk about buzzword, when I talk about things being trendy right now, it's just that. It's a trend. And what worries me is we're all going to care about this right now, but it's going to be short-lived. We're going to eventually move on to other issues. And it's just a way for us to woke scold on the internet or police each other's behavior on the internet. Because that's something that I'm also really seeing right now is comment sections where people are extremely mad that so-and-so is not using a reusable straw in their video and how dare you blah 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 and it worries me because this is like i said a serious issue a global issue it's not just political it affects every single living being on this planet much the way that buzzwords of the past are very serious and there are demographics of people in the world that don't get to just forget about it when it's no longer trendy to talk about anymore because it's a life or death issue for instance racism was kind of the bit the buzzword of last year in my opinion and I feel like that's been replaced with sustainability. I'm not saying one is a worse thing than the other or a better thing than the other. I'm not saying like, you know, channel your energy where you can channel it. Everything makes a difference. But there are people who are directly in impacted by racism every single day of their lives and it's violent and it's a life or death issue and you don't have the privilege of just forgetting that it exists because brands are now releasing enough shade ranges for everybody. Same thing with sustainability. It's a life or death issue. And if you don't think that it is, typically people who are already impoverished are harmed the most by climate change. And I will leave information down below so you can learn about this. But there are so many demographics of people who are so harshly being affected by this issue right now. And it's bigger than just recycling. It's bigger than just cardboard packaging and smaller PR packages. They're losing their food sources. They're losing the places where they can live because weather is getting so bad and stuff like that. It's a life or death issue. It's not just a trend. And we kind of have this privileged attitude about it. We have this privileged attitude of, well, everybody can get the metal straw. Everybody can use a reusable bag. Everyone can do their part. Something recently that's come to my attention is this documentary series on Netflix called Broken. A lot of us are talking about it right now because of the very first episode, which is about makeup. Marlena Stell is in it, kind of talking about how makeup is made and her experience as an influencer and a brand owner. But the episode kind of gears towards counterfeit makeup. If you continue to watch that series, which I recommend that you do because there's all kinds of great issues about um, fast furniture like Ikea, jewel vaping amongst teenagers, like all kinds of stuff. But the last episode is about plastic and it's shocking. But I'm glad that they did it because the focus of that episode is not only talking about the severity of the issue, how it's an epidemic, how plastic is pretty much an epidemic right now, but specifically as consumers, we've been brainwashed to think that it's something that we have control over, that it's something we can fix. And it's not, it's a global issue. It's a corporation issue. It's a big business issue. It doesn't matter how many of us are trying the best we can with the privilege that we have. Because like I said earlier, not everybody even has the resources to do the green things that we like to talk about in the beauty community. But a number that's been thrown around lately is that just 100 companies are responsible for about 71% of global admissions. That's wild. Other facts that might freak you out, just for the record, because I mentioned like 
plastic before and PR packages and things like that. It takes about a thousand years for plastic to biodegrade. Also, something that I've seen a lot in the beauty community is this like push for like mirrors. People advocating for mirrors being in all packaging. The tea about mirrors, this is just so random and not related to anything. Glass in itself takes about a million years to break down and you cannot recycle mirrors because of the coating that's on them. So they just kind of, you know, exist in the world for a million years and that's fucking crazy to me. Also, just in terms of like plastic. So, okay, going back to what I said about corporations being the bulk of it and now individuals are kind of made to bear that burden about 91 percent of plastic in the world is never recycled and in the broken episode something that they show is like you throw all these things into your recycling bin and you think oh it's plastic it's fine there's only so many different types of plastic that you actually can recycle and most of it just gets thrown in landfills so you watch all this information you consume all this stuff and you're like oh my god what are we gonna do i think that leads to how i'm now seeing it presented in the beauty community where there's kind of almost this false authenticity surrounding caring about this issue i think consumers really do care about this issue but what i want to bring to everyone's attention is that corporations don't because they're contributing to the problems to begin with but they're going to act like they do to get your money this is where we all kind of have to put our thinking caps on for a second we see this a lot just in general with all buzzwords Let, let's think like okay so inclusivity was a big theme last year you can also look at being cruelty free being vegan admitting like carmine from formulas things like that Brands don't actually ethically care about that stuff. They're doing it because they're mirroring the things that their consumers care about so that their consumers will continue to give them their money. We've also seen this with LGBTQ rights very often in our recent years as the legalization around gay marriage was kind of buzzing around and not yet legalized. This is where the moral of the story is not to not care about these issues, not to stop demanding this change behavior in brands because it is working that's the funny part even if it's inauthentic it still makes a difference because brands are responding to where dollars are spent so while you should not buy something just because it's marketed as recyclable and green like for instance how green makeup doesn't actually mean anything it doesn't have any legal backing to that definition it's just something trendy that brands slap on their product you shouldn't buy something just because a brand is Posing as sustainable is saying that their products are recycled and that it's so great and so green. But when you have the option to pick those things, you should go there. That's what you should pick, right? If you have the means and the money to do so. What really, really matters though, the kind of point of this issue is don't let it be a passing trend. Don't let it come and go. Don't put your energy into yelling at brands in the trend mood comments or yelling at your favorite influencers for not doing enough in your eyes. What we really need to do is demand systematic political change. And I'm not going to tell you where to vote. That's not my fucking business. But I will tell you if you care about these issues and it freaks you out, instead of working yourself up for it and yelling at everybody else about it, if you actually care, be politically aware and vote for candidates that are going to demand change or going to demand these big corporate changes because that's what's going to make the difference. We can only police brands so much on our little tiny platforms down here. You have to demand political change. Like, there's no other way to express it. I had referenced in an earlier video that, like, on the one hand, you can demand that everybody starts using reusable bags at the grocery store or you could vote for a plastic bag ban in your city. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. This kind of like short-term goals paired with these long-term goals, you know? In summary, <laughs> these are just like thoughts that I had going about my day because I did watch the Broken series. Like I said, a lot of other influencers have been talking about this stuff. It's coming up more and more in my comment section and other people's comment sections. I'm just like, I want everyone to be aware that Brands that adopt trends like this, these really serious issue beyond trend trends, aren't doing so out of the kindness of their hearts. They're doing so to reflect the culture in which we live in at that time, the beauty community culture that I'm always referencing. So be smart about it, but also use that to your advantage and use that to implement change. Because I think that's sometimes all we can do but it can be effective. Something to think about this holiday season as we're all consistently swiping our credit cards and clicking add to cart on our phones and accumulating more and more crap. <laughs> anyway, that's kind of like a quick commentary video. 
Let me know what you think about this subject down below because it honestly freaks me out to think about too much, but it's something we need to talk about. If you like this video, if you like commentary kind of videos, and if you like me, please hit like and subscribe. You can also follow me on my Instagram, which is also Spooky with Fat Hips, or my Twitter at Spooky Lacey, or the Half Cousins podcast where we talk about issues like this all the time. All of that will be linked down below. I probably am actually going to do my highlighter review now. But other than that, that is all I have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I will see you all in the next one.